Another important compound involving both hydrogen and oxygen is a compound called hydrogen peroxide. It has the chemical formula H2O2. Now, the way that the chemical formula is written can be quite deceptive because we see the two hydrogens written first and then the two oxygens, but that is not the way the compound is connected. And we will make the Lewis dot structure which shows the actual connectivity in hydrogen peroxide. Now, to make the compound, we notice that for each hydrogen, we need one valence electron, and for each oxygen atom, we need six valence electrons. So, six times two is 12, one times two is two, 12 plus two gives us 14 valence electrons that we have to allocate for this particular concept, compound. So, let's see how we can do that and satisfy both the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for oxygen. So, so far we've been able to satisfy the duet rule for each of the hydrogens using six electrons. So we have eight more electrons that we have to allocate. So let's see if we can satisfy the octet rule for oxygen as well. And there we have the structure of hydrogen peroxide. So we have two hydrogen, the two oxygen atoms in the center with hydrogen atoms on the edge. So we notice that the two oxygen atoms are held together by two electrons. This is a single bond. And we will learn later that oxygen, oxygen single bonds are very weak. So this bond, even though this is a stable compound, that bond is prone to breaking and that will have important chemical significance later on. But this gives us at least the general structure of hydrogen peroxide. The compound with the chemical formula N2H4 has the common or trivial name of hydrazine. Hydrazine is a very reactive, poisonous and explosive gas. And we can construct its structure. It has exactly the same number of electrons as hydrogen peroxide does. So here we have for each nitrogen, it's going to have five valence electrons. Since there's two nitrogen atoms, that gives us a total of 10 electrons. There are four hydrogen atoms. Each one contributes one electron. So again, we have a 14 electron system. So we have to allocate our two, four, six, eight of the electrons are needed right away so that we can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen. And by allocating the other six electrons, we can hook together the whole molecule and satisfy the octet rule for the nitrogens. Again, we notice here that between these two nitrogen atoms, we have two electrons, which we call a single bond. And for oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine, they always have weak single bonds with each other. So a nitrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen, or fluorine, fluorine single bond will be very weak. So therefore it's likely to break and you're likely to have a reactive compound as a result.
here yet another 14 electron compound. We have C2H6, which goes by the name of ethane. So again, each carbon atom has four valence electrons. So that gives a total of eight electrons. There are six hydrogens. Each one contributes one electron. So that gives us a total of 14 valence electrons. So by allocating the electrons to form a single bond between either a carbon and carbon or carbon and hydrogen, we're able to satisfy the duet rule for each of the hydrogens. We see that we filled up all the uh, holes in the gray areas. And we're able to do the same thing for the uh, carbon atoms. We're able to satisfy the octet rule. So we see that all the gray areas are shaded in and there's no empty holes. And we've used up all the electrons and there's no electrons left over. So this is a compound again called ethane, which again is used as a flammable gas to generate energy, generally for heat. If we take the gas methane and replace one of the hydrogen atoms with a fluorine atom, we end up with another structure that has 14 electrons. We see that fluorine contributes seven valence electrons, carbon contributes four, and the three hydrogen atoms each contribute one. So again, that gives us a total of 14 valence electrons. The chemical formula for this compound is CH3F, and we call this compound methyl fluoride. This CH3 group on the left, we call a methyl group. So we name it as methyl fluoride. 